In this video, we're going to talk about the divergence test. So what's the main idea behind this test? The purpose of this test is to tell you if a series will diverge. So here's what you need to know. If you take the limit as n approaches infinity of some sequence a sub n, if it does not equal 0, then the series the series is going to diverge. Now, what about the other half of the coin? So let's say if we take the limit as n approaches infinity of the sequence a sub n and it does equal 0, then the series, the infinite series, it may converge or it may diverge. We can't come with a conclusion. We need to run another test to find out if it's going to converge or diverge. But if it doesn't equal zero, then the series will diverge. So consider the series with the sequence 2n divided by 3n minus 4. So will this series diverge? Let's find out. Now, this is equal to a sub n. So let's take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n. And so that's 2n divided by 3n minus 4. So what we're going to do is multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over n. And so this is going to be 2 times, well, that's just going to be 2 divided by 3 minus 4 times 1 over n. Now keep in mind the limit as n approaches infinity for 1 over n will always be 0. And so this is going to be 2 divided by 3 minus 0, so it's 2 over 3. So therefore, the limit as n approaches infinity for the sequence a sub n, it does not equal 0. In fact, it's equal to 2 over 3. But the fact that it doesn't equal 0, it equals a finite value, tells us that the series, it diverges. Because if the sequence is 2 over 3, when n is very, very large, when you try to calculate the sum of the sequence for an infinite number of terms, you're going to keep adding 2 over 3 as n approaches infinity. And so the sum will keep getting higher, higher, and higher. And so the sum will never converge to a finite value. It's just going to keep going up to infinity. And therefore, we can say that the series, it diverges. Now, let's try another example. So we have a series with the sequence 1 over n. Will it converge or will it diverge? So let's start with the divergence tests. What is the limit as n approaches infinity for a sub n, which is 1 over n? So we know that's just going to be 0. So because this is equal to 0, this series, it may converge or it may diverge. Now, this particular series is known as the harmonic series. And if you list out the terms, when n is 1, it's just going to be 1. When n is 2, is 1 half when n is 3, 1 over 3, and so forth. Now, if you keep adding these values, you realize that they will not converge to a specific value. Even though each term gets smaller and smaller, the sum continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so the sum diverges. And so you need to know for a harmonic series, the infinite sum will always diverge. It's going to keep getting larger and larger and larger. It doesn't converge to a specific value. Now let's try one more example. Go ahead and use the divergence test to see if the series diverges. So let's take the limit as n approaches infinity for the sequence a sub n, which is 1 divided by 2 to the n. 
So as n approaches infinity, 2 to the n approaches infinity, and 1 divided by a large number will give you a small number. So 1 over 2 to the n will approach 0. So therefore, according to the divergence test, the series may converge or it may diverge because the limit equals 0. If the limit didn't equal 0, the series will definitely diverge. Now, this is a geometric series. You can write it this way. So I'm going to erase this and rewrite it as 1 over 2 raised to the n. So when n is 1, the first term is a half. When n is 2, the next term will be 1 fourth. And then 1 over 8, 1 over 16, and so forth. And so for a geometric series, if the common ratio, which is 1 half, if that's less than 1, meaning the absolute value is less than 1, then by definition, the geometric series will converge. It will have a sum, and the sum will be the first term divided by 1 minus r. So in this case, the first term is a half, and r is also a half. So 1 minus a half is a half, and a half divided by a half is 1. So the sum of this infinite geometric series will equal 1. So if you take 1 over 2 and then add it to 1 fourth, you will get 0.75. And then if you add 1 over 8, that will be like 0.875. And then plus 1 over 16, 0.9375. And then plus 1 over 32, 0.96875. So if you keep adding each successive term, you're going to get closer and closer to 1. But as you go to infinity, the sum will approach 1. And so because this infinite geometric series has a finite sum, we could say that the series converges. So you can use the divergence test to quickly tell if the series will diverge or not, if it doesn't equal 0. But if it equals 0, then you need to use another test to see if it diverges or converges. Now, here's another problem for you. So let's say if we have the series from 1 to infinity of 8 over 5 raised to the n. So go ahead and see if this particular series converges or diverges. So let's begin by using the divergence test. So what is the limit as n approaches infinity? of 8 over 5 raised to the n power. So let's say if we were to plug in 10. 8 over 5 raised to the 10th power would be like 109.95. If we plug in 100, it would be 2.58 times 10 to the 20. So it's getting higher and higher and higher as n approaches infinity. So we could say the limit approaches infinity. So because the limit does not equal 0, the limit as n approaches infinity for a sub n, since it doesn't equal 0, we could say that the series automatically diverges. Now keep in mind, this is a geometric series with a common ratio of 8 over 5. And because the common ratio is greater than 1, automatically you know that the geometric series will diverge. If r is less than 1, that is the absolute value of r, then the geometric series will converge. But just by looking at the divergence test, this entire series diverges. The sum will continue to get higher and higher and higher. It will never converge to a fixed value. And so that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it to be helpful, and I hope that it gave you a good understanding of the divergence test. It's one of the most simplest methods to use, and you can quickly tell if the series is going to diverge or not. So make sure you understand that test well and how to use it. Thanks again for watching.